with me today from in our private market. I'm joined by Rich Lloyd and Craig Moulton from Cobra Resources. Nice to see you both. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Andrew. Good to be back. Well, look, Craig, we'll, uh, we'll have a quick update on what you're, you're up to on the ground shortly. But Rich, if you can, give us a little reminder about your involvement with, uh, with Cobra. Yeah, we assisted on the fundraising when they relisted here in London, um, two or three months back now. And, you know, we've seen the company grow and success for the you know, share prices rallied. Um, and, you know, Craig is beavering away down there at Woodinna um, with the, the exploration work. As you know, we always said we wanted an earlier stage growth story on the platform, and it's proving to be that. And Craig's done another successful raise since, um, and it's sort of onward and upward. Well, looks plenty to catch up on, Craig. Beavering away, as Rich describes it. Little little reminder, if you would, as to Cobra Resources yourself, please. Okay. Well, so, um, I'm sure, as you remember from last time, that uh, Cobra is a gold exploration. Uh, we've got projects in South Australia. Um, in last uh, last November, as part of the RTO, we outlined a three-stage geochemical sampling program in the prospectus um, that had two really specific purposes. And um, the first was to provide a high confidence um, drill targets that would enable us to define um, possible drill extensions or drilling targets for extensions to the, you know, the existing resource. This is currently our 211,000 ounce resource at Woodna. Um, so that's in, in essence looking to define um, brownfields drilling targets. And the second was to identify high priority drilling targets um, at some of our more regional, tar you know, regional prospects. So you mentioned, Craig, that you're talking geochem sampling. Tell us a bit more about what that typically involves. Yeah, look, so in layman's terms, this is um, soil or surface sampling, um, and it's different from drilling. So with soil sampling, what we typically do is go and take a sample somewhere about one to three metres depth, and those samples might be between 50 and 200 metres apart in a grid. Um, it's taken with a hand auger. Um, it, it only requires a crew of typically of two or three people it's a relatively manual process, um, but there's no large, you know, truck and drill rig equipment. You know, um, with drilling, you typically have a, a couple of a uh, couple of trucks. Um, we, when we collect these samples, they're subject to really high precision analysis, um, and the results are typically in parts per billion, and we'd look at uh, 48, 49 different elements. So it's really important to understand that these samples, um, you, you don't really want to confuse these with typical gold samples that you would get from drilling results whether you're doing RC or diamond drilling that come back in grams per tonne. Um, and, you know, as I said before, we test for a, a range of different elements. What that gives us is what we call pathfinder elements. Um, and that actually leads us or vectors us to um, gold mineralisation. Well, just for those not too familiar, Craig, remind us why you're, you're not able to, to proceed straight to, to drilling in this circumstance. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Look, I mean, there's two reasons for that. Firstly, drilling is very expensive. Um, and so when you, went, when you spend the money on drilling, you want to make sure that you're drilling your best possible targets right from the get-go. Um, but, you know, and, and the Pathfinder analysis gives us that um, de-risking of those targets and enables us to spend the money as wisely as we can and get the best return for that investment. Um, the second way, the second reason really is that, you know, modern exploration has changed significantly over the recent years. Um, and yet the use of low detection, multi-element geochemistry now is seen as a very solid precursor to drilling and gives us much better vectoring to gold mineralisation. Um, believe it or not, it actually gives us better vectoring than the gold assays themselves in the sample. So the other day to hear that from these soil samples, that provides you with some, some better information, does it? Yeah, look, it does. Um, uh, you know, we, we're we able to actually see the remnants in the weathering profile on the regolith um, of the mineralisation. So we use elements such as tellurium, tungsten, bismuth, uh, molybdenum um, as pathfinder elements. And we know that they're highly elevated um, when the mineralisation is present. Funnily enough, um, other elements such as gold, silver, copper, etc., are actually quite mobile uh, in that sort of acidic environment. And when we do see elevated gold, for example, it may not necessarily relate to mineralisation at depth, whereas uh, those other elements I was talking about, the pathfinder elements, um, you know, we're very confident that that actually represents um, remnant gold mineralisation in the weathering profile, so in the surface. Um, can I just actually just close out, you know, your initial question um, around the, the exploration program. So 
we, you know, we initially said we would do three stages, um, with each stage being a focused geochemical soils program. Um, the first stage was to define and really understand which were the key pathfinders to mineralisation. So looking at that, that large 48 element um, assay suite to um, look at which ones were telling us where the mineralisation was. Um, so what we did is we went and collected strategic samples across the existing ore bodies and we also reassayed some of the historic drilling. Uh, and this was a significant success because it showed a very strong correlation between the pathfinders in the soils um, and the drill holes with existing mineralisation at depth. Um, so the second stage two program was then looking to collect and analyse soil samples around the existing resources. And once again, what we're trying to do is target extensions to the existing resources by defining those pathfinder elements because we know that will tell us where the gold actually is. Keeping in mind that, you know, all of this is undercover. So there's somewhere between one to two metres typically of sand cover over the, over the whole area. And then the third stage program um, will actually look further afield and we'll look at some high priority regional targets or what we call greenfields targets. So how successful was the stage two program? Oh, look, we were really happy with the results. Um, you know, we've managed to demonstrate that there's highly anomalous pathfinders of Baggy Green um, that extend for over a kilometre north and 500 metres east of the existing mineralisation. And uh, this is a really strong indication that Bag Baggy Green continues to the northeast, and it's already given us a number of really high priority drilling targets. Um, also, the multi element analysis at the newly named Grace Prospect uh, that's shown some highly, um, highly anomalous molybdenum. And while we currently don't have a lot of sampling there, it's, you know, it's really looking like it might be a new source of um, copper, copper gold mineralisation, may even be um, ISCG style mineralisation. Um, at Barnes, there was good indications of both pathfinders and anomalous gold. But what we find at Barnes, as we did at Baggy Green South and Clark, is that there's deeper sand cover there. You know, it typically may go three, four, five metres or even more. Um, so it's harder to get good um, soil samples for the pathfinder analysis using that, that method. Um, so one solution we're looking at now is to reassay some of the samples from historic RAB or air core drilling um, to get the pathfinder data from that. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention just briefly, if I may, is we also conducted a regional structural analysis from the aeromagnetic data. You know, fundamentally, fun fundamentally um, gold mineralisation is all about plumbing. And so what we do is we look to these large regional structures as basically um, the means of plumbing or focusing the fluids into the deposits. And what we've seen from that structural analysis is there's a really strong correlation between some of these really large structures and where we see the gold deposits. Um, what also came out of that is that we've seen a couple of structures that we already suspect carry mineralization that intersect, and as you can imagine, when things intersect, that gives you, you know, better room for things to, um, or better plumbing, if you like, a better room for fluids to carry. Um, but those areas have yet to be sampled with any soil sampling or anything else. So that's really exciting, and we're really encouraged about those new targets as well. So Craig, could you clarify for us why you didn't publish any gold results as part of the, the stage two work here? Yeah, we've been asked that quite a bit, actually. Um, and as I guess, as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, the program was never designed to deliver sort of gram per ton gold assays that you would see out of um, drilling. Um, the whole purpose of that stage two program was to define um, possible extensions of the, uh, of the existing resources. Um, and by that, I mean to identify areas that represented priority drilling targets. Um, that we would have a high amount of confidence so that we can focus our budget um, into uh, much lower risk, high probability intersects with the drilling. Um, look, if, our, if any investors are interested in having a look at some of the gold assays, we do have an updated slide pack that we put on our website, which um, does actually show some of the gold results. Uh, I think it's slide nine of that pack from memory. Um, and look, we did see some really high, not highly anomalous gold Gold, and I think at Barnes, one of the samples went 63 ppb gold, which um, we, we consider anything above about 20 ppb to be highly anomalous. So are you able to, are you able to now move on to, to stage three sampling here, Craig, or what, what, what impacts the, the COVID restrictions having? So look, we've been pretty fortunate with the travel restrictions. Um, there is still currently a, a travel restrictions with, between the states in Australia. Um, so we can't get access to South Australia uh, just yet, um, but we managed to get all the sampling, stage two sampling work done before that lockdown took um, effect completely. 
Um, we still plan to carry on with the stage three program. Um, what we'll probably do is we have in storage a number of the historic soil and um, drilling samples. So we can use those to um, as the basis for a lot of the multi-element geochem work. Um, and that should give us a large part of the information that we need for stage three. Um, in terms of actually drilling itself, the drilling program. So we'll design the, the program for the drilling once we've got all the stage three results in. Um, but our plans are, are unchanged. You know, we always said that we would start drilling in the second half of the year. Um, I would, I'm hopeful personally that we would be able to do that sort of early to mid quarter three. Um, have a will obviously update the market once we've got firm plans on our drilling program. Can you tell me a bit more about the, the ADI funding that you mentioned in the last announcement? Yeah, look, this does seem to cause a little bit of confusion and um, I, I, I apologise to our investors about that. Um, it's really a, a very positive thing, but I think some people have misunderstood that it um, may represent a significant amount of funding for us. What ADI is, it's a South Australian government initiative um, it's called the Accelerated Discovery Initiative Fund. And um, it's where the South Australian government actually matches up to 50% of in-ground exploration costs. But they only do it for specific projects. Um, you can't just apply for it for routine exploration work. Um, so the, one of the criteria is that you must come up with a new and innovative um, model um, that has the potential to open up new trains. And there's a fairly stringent process to qualify for the funding. And it goes through a series of rounds or well, technically goes through two rounds. Um, we submitted a, a, a round one proposal because we had some really interesting IOCG targets. Now for people that aren't familiar, IOCG stands for iron oxide copper gold. Um, it's a, a type of copper and gold deposit um, such as the uh, BHP's massive Olympic Dam deposit, um, Oz Minerals, Carapatina. Um, both of those mines, you know, they're world-class mines within 400 kilometres of Woodna, and the source of the metal and the heat that forms those deposits are the same uh, granites that we see within our tenements. Um, so the, um, the Mines Department of South Australia approved our stage one proposal, and we're now in the stage two, but they haven't announced the results of stage two um, yet, so we're still waiting to hear from them. I actually spoke to one of the senior managers there late last week, and they expect um, that they will have some news on that in, in a week or two's time. I do want to stress though that, you know, that is a small component of our um, potential funding and it, it would be nice because we'll be able to accelerate that, that part of the exploration program, um, which was always an addition to what we, we set out to do in the beginning, but it's not material to our overall funding requirements um, and we would still look to explore those new targets in due course anyway. What about this recent uh, £670,000 equity raise? What was, the, what was the objective there? Look, so that was a decision the board made. Um, we found it was an opportune time to, or felt that it was, to um, raise some needed funds for our exploration activities. Um, you know, there's been significant demand for our stock, um, as Rich was saying earlier, um, and pricing levels meant that uh, placing our headroom was both cost effective and also less dilutionary for our existing shareholders. Um, so look, as common practice, we approached both of our retained brokers um, to place this stock at normal commission rates. So finally, Craig, your, your general feeling here towards progress? Oh, look, I'm really happy. Um, you know, I think with the, the COVID-19 issues, um, that could have been an issue for us. We've been really fortunate. We've managed to keep the exploration program going. Um, really hasn't delayed us significantly. In terms of the results from Baggy Green, really excited about that. You know, there's some great targets that we want to drill there. And I'm um, really looking forward to getting stuck into it and getting the drill rig out there in um, the second half of the year. Rich, you're still with us. What do you make of developments? Uh, we see a lot of earlier stage projects coming to us, you know, through the platform. There's a lot of people who want to raise money. And as I said, we've always vetted these projects. And Craig's approach of, you know, you really need a detailed understanding of the geochemistry to zone in on these targets and you know world-class deposits have been missed because people have just chucked in rab rigs or rc rigs whereas craig's building it up properly as you know most geologists were taught at university but we all seem to forget that and just chuck a rig at it so even you know things like olympic dam could have been missed in the past i know chuki kamata was looked at a few times 
So it's a, you know, in the ADI process as well, you know, that's a, an acknowledgement that they're doing the right thing. You know, they, they look at it in a great deal of detail and, you know, the technical and new innovative ways, well, not really new innovative, but, you know, the, the, the technical ability that these guys have got and understanding what they've got under the, under the regolith there. And while I've got you, Rich, I'm keen for an update on your, uh, your investor lounge, continuing to build that out. How's it going? Yeah, very well. We've got a lot, lot of interest. Um, again, we're vetting the companies that are going in there. Um, we've, got a, we've got an antimony project coming in soon, which uh, should be interesting. It's very niche. Um, and again, it's, uh, it's a bit of a holding pattern for people who want to get the profile out there, get news such as Craig's just announced with you know, and some detail in there, and it stays in there. Um, so investors can read about Barnes. You know, he said slide nine on the, on the gold results. So all that sort of information is there. And it's there permanently. Rich, Craig, nice to see you both. Thanks very much indeed for your time. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Cheers.